Meatball time! We're Meeple Talk. I'm Adam. Yes, I'm Stephanie. And this time we are talking about a new one, Airships of Oberon. And the reason why we're focusing on it, well, ah, we've got the mastermind, I guess, behind this creation. Mastermind. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Airships of Oberon is a steampunk game for three mm -hmm. to six players. Uh, and it's a game that I designed. And mm -hmm. I also did some of the artwork. So this is going to be a little different from a review. I would call this a preview. Mm -hmm. um, this is going to be on Kickstarter June the 28th is when it's planned Mark to it release. On your calendar. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I would like to tell you a little bit about the game. And, and obviously sure. Stephanie would like uh, to help. Let me <laughs> take a stab at it. So I've only seen it just now, I think. So uh, generally what we have is that we're all various steampunk themed char characters here. Mm -hmm. And... Um, what we have, if you look at this master board, this uh, landscape here, you have your island with a variety of, well, regions and also different artifacts that we have uh, represented by these uh, hexes here. And then every character that we have, um, what the idea is that we all have these missions that we need to complete. Um, so we have our special deck unique to ourselves that will have... Uh, combinations of two, three, four missions, depending on the size of game and how many players, it may limit how many um, or how big your mission could get. And what your overall job is, is to go around the board to collect your certain artifacts. You also have your master placard, which will have certain uh, special effects that you can use to, um, well, whether it's to help uh, capture or repel uh, other people from trying to steal your artifact from you, uh, other types of effects that you can have on the board to hinder or help yourself. And uh, generally, as long as you get your certain artifacts and complete your missions, you're actually going to be progressing uh, around the S side of the board until the final, when you hit the magic number 36. What happens then? You become... A flux master. Flux master. Yes. So special things happen. Hair oh, grows yeah. in new places. And <laughs> <Hmm>. <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> but generally, that's the idea behind the game. And also, when you... Um, collect your artifacts. Uh, sometimes you might find that with other players, they're going to have missions that are going to need the same artifacts that you mm -hmm. have, and so you may have to battle it out. So you have battle dice that you're going to roll, and of course, depending on who's the attacker and who's defense, whoever rolls highest will win. Uh, so you can steal uh, from each other as well. So it creates, mm -hmm. uh, instead of just being your own unique mission, your own solo game, it actually brings in a lot more uh, cooperation or competition and interaction with the other players. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll, I'll give you a general rundown of what a turn would look like. Yeah. Um, so it, as I mentioned, it, you can have up to six players. Uh, but basically, you'll start by rolling the dice. And there's three sets of dice. There's the blue and purple. And then there's the white, or in this case, wood-colored dice. And you'll roll those to move. And then you'll move your airship person. Mm -hmm. And however many. So in this case, I rolled ten. And if I look at my mission, let's say I this is my mission, I need this cog and I need this uh, water symbol and I need this ring. So I can get them in any order. So I might say, well, which one is close? At this point, when you start, you're already on a sky port. Now, when you move, you can move along the uh, train tracks that you have here, but you can also, when you're at a sky port, you can fly to any named location. So for example, I could fly to the Kami Garden and then I could move and take this artifact. And then when I captured the artifact, I will put it on top of one of my cards, on top of my card where, where I need it. So mm -hmm. uh, other people can then see that I have it. So if somebody else needs the gear, for example, then they can use an effect to try and take it from me. They can use Captivo. Captivo is the most important effect mm -hmm. in the game. You have 12 effects on your board that you can use at any time. And uh, one thing that's really interesting about the game is that you can do whatever you want on your turn. You, when you roll to move, you can move or you can start by using an effect or you can move a little bit and then use an effect and then you can capture an artifact and then you can use another effect and you can move a little bit more. So you have a lot of freedom in what you can do in a turn. So anyway, so I captured one artifact and because I only moved, what, what did I move? I just moved one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. I still have six more on, on the die. So now I can continue and try and capture another artifact. Um, so probably my fastest way is to go to another skyport and fly an airship. 
to another location. So that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, so I've gotten to the uh, the sky port. So then, uh, if I want, I can cast an effect, use an effect, uh, um, and then the next player then takes their turn and they roll dice and they do the same mm -hmm. thing. Now, as I mentioned, uh, the most important thing is uh, the the artifacts. There will always be situations where um, two or maybe three different people are trying to get the same artifact. So then you'll have uh, a dice battle, basically. And the way that works is you don't use the movement dice because um, you'll, you'll want to remember how much you ha movement you have left because mm -hmm. you may have a dice battle after you've only used some of your movement. Right. So then one player, yeah, uh, let me, let me the, the player who's going to use Captivo will then uh, right. put a, an effect token on Captivo to indicate that it's been used that turn. All right, and then we'll both roll. Ooh, ten. So I rolled four, so <laughs> I'm not winning. However, now you can enhance your roll. For example, mm -hmm. if I have an artifact, I can use the Fortuna effect to re-roll my dice. Mm -hmm. uh, any dice roll. So I can re-roll it. And now I've got ten. So oh, now we're tied, oh. right? Yeah, and I don't have any artifacts, so I can't really do However, any However, well, when we're tied, yes. Yeah. <laughs> when we're tied... Um, the defender wins. So she, Stephanie is still winning. Um, and uh, let's just say I don't want to use any of my other effects. You can also use your energy effects to modify the dice. So there's a lot of different things that can happen with this mm -hmm. die roll. Um, but in this case, let's say I've lost. Now, if I lose, then she gets to push me six spaces in any direction. So she basically blows me away, so to speak. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Wink. Yes. <laughs> so now I'm further away from my goal, and then on Stephanie's turn, then she can run away. Oh, and she gets my artifact, right? So when you get the artifact, then of course you get experience points. So whenever you capture an artifact, you get three. So originally I would have gotten... What color am I? Yeah, okay. So I would have gotten three for capturing this artifact. So now that Stephanie uh, has stolen it from me, she gets it. And she, she takes the three points, and I lose the three points. And uh, when you get to 36, then you become a Flux Master. Mm -hmm. And when you become a Flux Master, then you go on your final mission. And See, the final the mission, it looks like I have it buried here. Oh, mine's here. Um, so you'll have yes. artifacts that you're still going to need to get. And then you'll see these three keys on the top. So why don't you explain what that's all about? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's three keys on the board. Mm -hmm. So your final mission, you need to gather those three keys. And you capture them in the same way you capture artifacts. Mm -hmm. And then you need to get to the center. Uh, where the codex is yeah. and then you win the game so there's no counting up of points or anything mm -hmm. like that you've just won the game um, race to the finish essentially yes. now these two artifacts you don't need to get they're optional but if you get them mm -hmm. you'll free up uh, some of your uh, effects because yeah. the ones that you expend uh, normally you can't use them again until you free them up yes mm -hmm. some of them are usable but a lot of them are not so mm -hmm. this allows you to free up more effects in a sense you become more powerful right because yeah. then you have all of these new effects to use again um, and other players will try to stop you from obviously capturing those keys and getting to the center. Other mm -hmm. players will become uh, flux masters maybe while you're gathering the keys and they can yeah. steal them from you as well. Um, so it's a very social, a very interactive game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so there's a lot of strategy, but there's definitely a lot of uh, social interaction, which is one of the most important things for me in this game. I think it's very dramatic. The ending can be very epic because mm -hmm. a lot of different, you know, uh, artifacts are changing hands and the keys are changing hands and people are casting a lot of different effects at each other. It's, and it all happens yeah. very closely with each other and one of the things I like about this game is that um, because there's a variety of missions that you need to complete and they have different lengths you can choose the order in which you have to do them but you have to go through a certain number before you get to the Flux Master uh, status is that you're not having a situation where there's one runaway player where they just seem to mm -hmm. take off early, have an early advantage, and then they just kind of go with it right through to the end. There's always the opportunity for people to catch up because longer missions obviously are going to take mm -hmm. longer, shorter ones are easier to pop off. So depending on how much competition there are for certain artifacts, based on how many players, you might be able to abandon a mission and swap out and do it small ones to kind of catch up or get ahead. The other thing too, which is neat about this game is that even though you're competing for artifacts, it doesn't matter if you're in a three, four, five, or a six player game, like on the size, it doesn't um, make the game harder to uh, do with the more number of players because um, you can actually house rules that if you want or kind of work with each other. Sometimes you can directly compete for artifacts, but if you sometimes find that you're unsuccessful a couple of times, 
you might agree, okay, you know what? You finish your mission. I'll just land where you're going to go, grab your artifact right after you. And so sometimes there are some cooperative elements too to mm -hmm. kind of let the game progress on and, and, and move on quickly. So there's not this feeling of being bogged down that people are stuck not getting anywhere with, with the artifacts that they want to achieve. So it kind of balances out your um, the game flow in that way. So that's really neat and that's really good and I, I like that for that. I also like uh, the artwork on this. I mean, look at these uh, these character tokens. I mean, they're kind of awesome. They're really mm -hmm. colorful, rich, and, and they also add a nice dimension to the game that you get into that particular mm -hmm. character. So I think that's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, mm -hmm. so yeah, this is, I would say 90% of the art. Um, one of the stretch goals for the Kickstarter will be mm -hmm. upgrading the art on the boards. And I think the boards look pretty nice right now. That's mostly my art, except for the portraits. Everyone's um, a little. But, but I'm hoping uh, to upgrade that a little bit more as yeah. well. Um, but anyway, um, you know, this is my baby. This isn't, yeah. this, uh, this isn't a game I came out with a week ago. I've been working on this for a long time, long perfecting time. it, you know, uh, my friends. And, and, and we've done blind tests of mm -hmm. the game as well. We've done a lot of play testing, mm -hmm. um, you know, perfecting every single effect. And, you know, uh, all of the game mechanics. I, I think, it, you know, it's just me talking. I designed the game. What am I going to say? Essentially, but, it's ready to go. Yeah I, yeah. I want you to know that I, I, I really think this is a great game. And I'm mm -hmm. putting my reputation on it. And I hope you'll come to the Kickstarter and take a look. Yeah, so come yeah. check it out. What was the release date? June? 28th. 28th? Come a have Tuesday. a Tuesday, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so. Thank you. Thanks for uh, watching. And, uh. Yeah. Wait for our next video. Exactly. <laughs> See you later. See you later. Bye-bye.